Hi everyone, it's Kai. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a tutorial for this older press-on design of mine. I recently received an order for it and I thought I would not only show you how to make the set, but also go through my entire press-on process from start to finish. I know that some of my subscribers are looking to get into press-ons and have questions, so I thought I would go over all of the different programs I use and how I ship all of my orders and that sort of thing. Hopefully you find this helpful. At the time of filming this, I am actually in Florida, currently awaiting Hurricane Milton. I live in central Florida, so hopefully it won't be too bad, but I did just want something to distract me from worrying about it, so I thought I would film some content. Because of that though, this is a longer, more chatty video. I really hope you guys like these. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and let's get into it. So first things first, my nail desk situation is quite the mess right now. I had been working on some PR, some other designs and packages. I have some things that need to get put away. Some packages over here that I have yet to unbox fully and put in their places. So I will go ahead and do that and probably insert a little bit of the footage here just so that you get a sense of kind of what the actual behind the scenes are like. I know that usually when I do tours and stuff, I try to clean up and make my space look presentable, but this is the reality and this isn't even half as bad as what it usually looks like. I've already done some tidying. So yeah, let me go ahead and get things cleaned up. Here's my cat. The name's Smog. He's probably wondering what I'm doing. You want to say hi? I think he's sleepy. I think it's nap time for him. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started with some cleaning. Okay, so my desk right now is kind of a mess. I'm going to clear all this off because I personally am somebody who likes working in a clean space. I feel a lot more motivated when I have a clear desk. So let me go ahead and move all this stuff off. I had been putting on a set of press-ons to take some photos with, so I have all my like nail tools out. I personally always like to clean off my nail tools, so I will just rub them down with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol before storing them, just to make sure that if I do go to use them and I forget to clean them when I use them, there's no, uh, there's nothing on them. I also recently picked up the Mayo Eros collection. Now, this was sent to me as PR, but I am so excited about it because look at how gorgeous these colors are. I will be doing a full look with these. Hopefully soon, I'm thinking like Chinese lantern flowers with some 3D wire work because they're just perfect colors for like florals. You get the really nice warm tones here. And then this almost olive -y gold green color. I just, I love this collection. I'm a big fan of the Mayo and Yogurt brand. Or sorry, not yogurt. Uh, Mayo and Yogo brand. They're sister brands. And I just think that they make some really nice polish collections. And they're a little bit more on the affordable side too. I think each one is, if you buy these individually, $17, if I'm not mistaken. These are new as well to Sweetie Nail Supply. Um, these are the soft gel tips. They're a more structured tip. They have two versions, one that's like your typical standard tip, and these ones are a thicker structured tip with a higher apex. I have really weird nails. They're both curved and flat, if that makes any sense. Like the top of it is pretty flat, but then the edges, uh, my sidewalls are very much curved. So I love the shape of most Korean nail tips in terms of like the length and the actual shape of the free edge. But unfortunately, a lot of them are pretty flat, which works for most people. I just have, again, strange curved nail beds. So these ones, I am trying out and they're working much better. And I just have all my trash here. 
Um, I have this little, <laughs> it's not the most glamorous thing, it's like this little plastic bin that I put all my trash in when I'm doing a set and I just dump it in the big trash when I'm done. It's not the most glamorous solution. I do want to get something a little bit more decorative eventually, but we'll get there. Another product that I am going to be trying out soon is the zombie peel off base. Sorry, the lighting right now is not very good because I'm filming like my desk space and my room lighting is not very bright. So I'm trying to like keep things to where you can see them. You can't really see it, but it's the zombie peel off base gel. I will also be reviewing this one pretty soon, but it needs to go away for now. Okay, so now everything is cleared off. I have a clean space, but I do need to change my fake flowers. I will keep the white one because the white goes with everything, but the design that I'm going to do is a blue wizard Ravenclaw type set. So these red ones don't exactly work, but I do have these blue hydrangeas that should be good. So I will just put those together put them in the corner and adjust them when I actually set up the shot. Um, oh, and I forgot. If you do not have a lint roller and you have one of these silicone mats, get yourself one. This is the easiest way to just clean off any sort of debris, any sort of dust or fuzzies. You can also wipe this off. I'll sometimes do a, a full wipe with isopropyl alcohol because it gets maybe a little bit of polish on it and it'll come right off. And there we go, we're all clean. So now that I have my desk set up, I am going to go ahead and start pulling out all the things I need for my set and then place them here for easy access. So the I've gotten a lot of questions about this and the only thing I really do for nail design currently is I will save a bunch of pictures on Instagram. So I'll use my phone usually for that because that's usually what I'm browsing on. So I'll go into Instagram and I have, you know, a bunch of people that I follow on here. I have a nail account specifically because I want to keep one account for nails, one for my personal things so that my algorithm is hopefully just all nails on this one. Although as you can tell, some other beauty things slip through, but I have a nail account that I use to both advertise my stuff and also to gain ideas. Because what I do is I will save ideas to different collections. So here I have just different albums. I've tried to recently label the albums with the different main design inspo so that I can keep track of things easier. So I'll save design inspo for each design here and then I'll screenshot it and I will put it into Google Slides. I know I'm basic, it's really bad. If you want to check out a video of people who have like really nice streamlined design processes, I would recommend uh, Hope from Nails Box of Hope. She's amazing, she does really awesome, like Japanese Korean style nail art. And she recently did a video all about how she designs sets. So I will link that down below. I also follow, um, I believe it's Mini Amy, and she has amazing videos if you are starting as a press-on uh, artist. She does custom press-ons online. She does very well for herself as far as I understand, and she has just really great informative videos on getting started with a press-on business. So I will link hers below. Both of the two have very similar yet different design processes, so I would check both of them out and see which one might work for you. I have been asked before to do a design process video. I'm probably going to hold off on that for a while because I don't have a streamlined process. I would like to start using like the whiteboard apps, things like that, but I would like to play around with them a little bit more first so that I know what I'm doing. So for now, yeah, I just save things here in Instagram and I'll have different like keywords. So I have celestial, um, metallic liquid, cat eye gel, 3D flowers, um, Inspo from Divock, Valorant, 3D figures, pastel unicorn, watercolor, lotus flowers, um, Y2K, ballet core. So yeah, I just have all of these different topics for ideas that I want to do designs for. 
and I just keep adding to the different folders so that I can go back and pull inspo pictures as needed. So once I have my saved pictures, I pull out my tablet and I hate to say it, but I'm super old school. I use Google Slides at the moment for my design inspo. Um, I have like one presentation that's just filled with design inspo and I will just throw a bunch of pictures on here. It's, I would not recommend this. Don't do this. Don't do what I do because with this, I don't really have room for a ton of pictures. You just have like whatever size your slide is. And then I'm not adding what I should be adding, which is what polish I use for each design. I'm really just putting in the inspo pictures and using those um, when I go to make the design. I have tons of different things here. Things that I haven't done yet, things that I have, just all sorts of different inspo pictures. Yeah, would not recommend this. It's, it's very rudimentary. I would definitely recommend those other two channels if you're looking for a very comprehensive design video. But for the set that I'm doing today, I think the only inspo pictures I had were, I think I mainly relied on like this one right here from this creator. She's on Instagram. And this was kind of the inspo for the spacey, wizardy, magical look that I was going for. So I will try to remember to link her below as well, but I will just take this and I'll prop it up on the back of my desk. And when I'm doing a nail design, I can use this to help guide me. So I'll have this, or like if I'm using a different one, um, I'll zoom out so I can see all the pictures and it's just a good little reminder of what I'm going for in terms of the overall look. Now in my head, there's a lot going on. Um, I will explain when I do a full design with me video, but I do go into a design with a clear idea in my head of what I want on each nail. Does it always work out the way I want to? No. Do I end up changing designs pretty often because of this? Because I'm not writing it out fully or drawing it out? Yes. So again, don't do as I'm doing. <laughs> um, people just asked. I, I feel like I live in a state of organized chaos in a way. <laughs> um, so other than getting design inspo, I do also use my phone for keeping a catalog of the products that I use in each design. It's not the best system, but for me it works currently. So I scroll back and I find the design. Here it is. This is the one that was ordered and hopefully, let me see. Yep, I put right in the description here the products I use. So I know I use the Mau Mia jelly polishes, a cart rhinestone glue, and it looks like the Born Pretty Cat Eye Gel SB01. So what I can do now is I can go over to my nail shelves and I can pick out all of the polishes that I'm going to be using for this set. So let me go do that. All right, so I actually have some new polishes since doing that initial design and I did talk to the customer and she was okay with me upgrading the design a little bit since it is an older one. So I pulled out the Born Pretty Magnetic Gel that I used, which should still work. But I also have this one that I want to test out. It is like a really nice reflective blue cat eye gel from F Gel. And then this is a new blue syrup that I have that I think will just be a little bit better for the design than the original polish that I was using. And then I'm looking at the original and there are some charms. So I'm looking and I see that I also need a milky white it looks like and i might do again like a bit of an upgrade and i think i could do some inks for this and it would look really nice let me grab my white inks and it looks like i need gold flake so i'm gonna go to my drawers and i'm going to collect everything i need for this design so this is a version she ordered because i have two different ones so I know I need my celestial little nail decals, a gold moon, some AB rhinestones, some gold caviar beads, 
a gold chrome. I will use my new gold chrome, my nail bio, my favorite. And yeah, that should be it. Okay, so I have all of my supplies. So I'm just going to move these out of the frame. I put stuff like in the back of my desk so that it's not showing in frame when I'm filming. And that way I have like a clear area to film in. Now the next thing I need are my nail tips and that way I can do the sizing. All right, I've got my nail tips, which means that I have everything I need to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to change the camera to my overhead camera and finally get on with the full design. Okay, so now we're at my desk. Um, I have all of my supplies, so I need to set up my frame of reference. So I will put my camera up and then I'll take those flowers that I laid out earlier and I will just zoom in as much as I would for the shot and then organize the flowers just in the corner. This actually is not just for decorative reasons, it also helps me remember that I need to stay below kind of this line here to stay in frame. And so it just helps me remember when I'm going out of frame. I actually have the biggest problem though with going too close to myself because I'm looking at stuff like close to my face here. And so I, I'm constantly trying to remind myself, okay, you need to be further away, not closer to yourself to stay in frame. It's a work in progress. Um, I think every nail artist struggles with that who does content, but let's go ahead and size the tips out. Now, I've actually shown this process on a previous video that I will link up in the corner, so I'm not exactly going to show it here. I also did not have permission from the client to show her pictures. So yeah, check out that link if you're interested to see how I size the tips. Okay, so now I've switched to my other mic because I did want to speed up this footage a little bit, but I need to connect the nails to the stands. Normally I use two different stands with different color holders so that I can tell which is the left and right hand. But since this will have some magnetic gel on it, the design, I don't want it interacting too much with like a middle stand. So I'm using these acrylic ones and I'll just have to be really careful about keeping track of which hand is which. So I will attach them to the right stand. But first there's like a little notch at the end of the press on tips. I assume it's from where they're connected to like a, a mold or something. And so that just needs lightly filed away. I'll do that for every finger and then stick them on the stands and then I will put on my nitrile gloves. If you've been around my channel, you know that I like speaking about this, but please make sure that you're being safe when using gel polish as much as possible. Try to wear gloves. I know it's not like the most comfortable all the time, but uh, if you have sensitive skin especially, there's a chance you may develop an allergy to some of the products in gel nail polish. And to avoid that, you want to avoid contact with uncured gel specifically. Once it's cured, it's fine. It's when it's uncured that it can cause irritation and eventually lead to an allergy. For the base coat, I'm using the Yogurt Zero Base Gel. I'm really liking this lately. I've talked about it a couple times. It's just a nice thinner base coat. It's got a strange consistency, but I'm getting used to it. And I do like the thinner viscosity because I am going to be layering quite a bit for this design, so I don't want to build up too much bulk quite yet. And one thing that I've definitely learned so far in my press on journey is to not make nails with custom base colors. When I first started out, I had very few gels to use, and so I was constantly like mixing up colors to be the custom shade that I wanted. And that's just bad if you need to then go back and recreate a set and you don't remember exactly which colors you mixed. So you can see here, I am like putting together, I think four different polishes to try to get to this custom blue color. It's like a slightly, slightly green toned navy blue. I had some dark blue polishes, the ones that I showed in the beginning, but they weren't quite as 
uh, cream tone as I wanted it. So I did have to go in with that custom mix, but I'm laying down one coat over all of the nails that will not have the cat eye gel on top. The brush that I'm using to apply this gel is the Mayo Piano Square Brush. I absolutely love this thing for gel application, for potted gels, for anything that doesn't come with its own bottle and brush. It's just so soft. Because it's so nice and soft, it just floats the color over really easily, really evenly. So I highly recommend that brush. I will have it linked in the description. And you can use my code GETPRESSED at Sweetie Nail Supply for 10% off. This here is the F gel. I believe it's from the Celebrity Collection. It's a blue magnetic gel that is absolutely gorgeous. I love this. It's so sparkly and stunning. I'm creating a velvet effect by just running a round magnet around each side. You actually don't need to get too close for this effect. Um, you want to hold the magnet a little bit further away and it'll create that nice glow in the center. And then I'm going over the top of it with that custom blue gel just to deepen the color a little bit. So every nail gets a second layer of that custom blue gel. And then I'm going back in with another layer of the magnetic gel. I do not have a code right now for Zillaboo, Zillaboo unfortunately. Um, I've been thinking about maybe reaching out, I don't know, I kind of feel weird about reaching out to brands um, and being like, hey, uh, do you want to work with me? I don't know. I get really self-conscious about that kind of stuff. I'm definitely like one of those people who would be uh, embarrassed to ask for a promotion and I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's probably not. I probably need to be a little bit more confident in myself and in my um, abilities and skills, but that's just how I am. So uh, I might reach out or I might just wait until they next open up applications for Zillabu Muses. So we'll see. Um, but for now, I know there are a lot of creators um, who have codes. If you just want to search up Zillabu codes, for the flakes, I'm just using this foil pack that I got off of, I think Amazon or something like that. And I'm using a silicone tool to kind of break up some of the bigger pieces and then stick them on the nail. For this first layer, I just did not wipe away the inhibition layer of the gel underneath. And that served as like a nice little tacky base for the foil. And then to create the marbled effect, I go over it with a blooming gel. I just happen to have this Beatles Blooming Gel. It works great. I also know that you can just use base coat to get kind of a blooming effect. But I applied the gel and as it was wet, I painted in some streaks of a white jelly polish. And then I go in and I ombre on a hollow gold cat eye gel on the pointer finger. I just use an ombre brush to blend that down towards the base and then I go in with that custom blue and I try to add some depth to those galaxy nails by just adding some darker patches. I have a better method for this that I do show later, but after doing that, I use that same hollow gold cat eye gel and this I just dab over some of the areas on the nail. It should be very sporadic spread out. You want this to look organic, in some ways messy, so I try to leave some areas of the white, some areas of the blue showing, and I will magnetize that. Here is the first power outage of this video. So because I was filming as the hurricane was approaching, I was expecting to lose power, but I was not expecting it to go out so soon. This was at like 6 p.m. However, I tried to push on and it just, it, it didn't happen, so this is later when the power finally came back on. I'm just laying down a coat of base coat to even out the texture on the nail. I'm doing this because I want to apply those inks that I attempted to show before the power cut out so I can get like a quartz effect. So I'm blending in that dark blue color with the base coat and letting that sit to kind of smooth out the surface. This adds both depth to the color and gives me a smooth surface to apply the inks to. I like using the silicone tool because you get almost like an easy marbled look with this because it doesn't paint on an even layer. 
Then I cure and wipe away the tacky layer for my ink application. This is the doughy marbly ink. I like it. It's just a white art ink and it comes with a um, like a diluter liquid that I think is just some sort of mix of acetone and or isopropyl alcohol. But I'm just using the diluter here to soften some of those harsh lines. I do want to keep one or two of them to create that kind of like veined look. But the other edges I am just softening out and blending. When you're using this kit, I would recommend wiping off your blender brush before you place it back in the bottle so that you don't contaminate your blending liquid. So I just wipe it on a little lint-free wipe. And once the inks are dry, I am painting on a thin layer of transfer foil so that I can add the last layer of gold flakes. I really think the key to getting a good galaxy quartz gemstone type look is just doing a bunch of different layers. That way you can get good depth in the design. So I'm going in here and just adding more of those gold flakes atop where they already were placed. And again, this just helps create a sense of depth. For the chrome details, I'm going to top the nails with the Zero Matte Top Coat from Devoc. I like this for chrome application. I do recommend though that you make sure to apply a nice thick coat. I ended up applying I think too thin of a coat to one of the nails because I did have some chrome sticking. So a couple tips for using this, wipe down the inhibition layer before applying it and then make sure to apply a nice even thick coat. For the actual chrome details, I'm going to use the Diami Mirror Gel. I think it's the Mirror Powder Gel. I don't know, I'll have it linked below. But if I were to compare this to something like the Jello Jello Edge Gel, it is just slightly more runny. It self levels a bit. So I would say it's a good in between if you're trying to get like a smoother 3D chrome look. It's not going to flatten all the way, but it's also not going to keep quite as much texture as say the Jello Jello Edge Gel. Sometimes through certain designs, I find that the Jello Jello Edge Gel actually is a little bit too textured. So it's nice to have that in between. And for the chrome, I'm going to use the gold that I always use, which is the Nail Bio Gold Chrome Powder. It's just a really nice gold chrome. I think it's a good in between when it comes to being warm and cool toned. I'll rub that in and then wipe away all of the extra with a makeup sponge. To apply the charms, I'm using the McCart Rhinestone Glue. I got this stuff when I just started with my nail art journey and I've been using it ever since. I don't know, I really like the squeezy tube. It's a nice affordable option and I think it's just so handy to have that nozzle. I will say though, it doesn't work quite as well for super large charms. It does not hold its shape enough for big heavy crystals. Then I will reach for something like a solid nail glue or uh, like the Tiara Fix Gel from Jinbi. But for just like these teeny little things, it's just really handy to pull out and apply with the nozzle itself. Here, I'm just adding some little caviar beads, lining them up and then flash curing everything with my flash care lamp. This is probably the most tedious part for sure. But once everything is applied, I'm going to top coat with the D-Gel non scorch top coat. This is a medium to thick viscosity gel, so it will allow you to build up the shape and not be so runny that you can't get a good thick layer, but it's also not going to be too gloopy. But because it does have some structure to it, I can create a nice even coat here on these marbled galaxy nails. The texture on these is really uneven because of those layers. So I just apply that top coat almost like I would a builder gel and try to build a bit of an apex, flipping the nail over to let the polish pool and then sticking it in the lamp pretty quickly. I am somebody who does like to top coat over rhinestones. I know that you lose a little bit of the dimension, but I would prefer just having them remain shiny and stuck on the nail, not coming off. So I do top coat over rhinestones. And then I'm just going in and filing down the sides a little bit here of each nail in case there was any gel that kind of dripped off to the side so that you get a really nice clean profile on each nail. And now we're ready to pack them up for shipping. 
Okay, so these two are the drawers that I keep all of my packaging materials in. I have up top everything I need to build my press-on kits, the application kits, and then the bottom is kind of like the overall packing for the outside. So I start with an application kit. I just have these little um, gossamer bags, I think is what they're called. But I got these off of Timu. They are cute, like they fit the kind of aesthetic I'm going for. But the problem with these is you can buy them pretty cheaply and unfortunately that also means they're made pretty cheaply. Some of them, the drawstring doesn't work, it catches. So I have to make sure when I'm picking one out that I pick one that works, I have to test it. But I'll grab one of these. And then I do need in here, Alcohol prep pads, these are actually from Amazon. They're just cheap, like pre-made alcohol prep pads. Uh, Kirad's pretty, I don't know, probably well-known medical brand. I throw in four. So I will put these in first because they are kind of like a flatter thing that can sit here nice and organized. And then also in this drawer I have my nail files and my buffing blocks. For the nail files, I get these in bulk um, pretty cheaply off of like Timu or whatever. And so I'm not gonna be stingy with them. I'm gonna put in three. These are the ones that your customers want to use to file down, just the free edge. I'll just situate them right there next to the prep pads. And then these are the buffing blocks that I would recommend your customer uses for the actual nail plate. I'll put in two of these. And then I think that's it for this drawer. So if we open this drawer here, this is where all of the more fun things are. So. I need um, the actual adhesives. I have the sticky tabs here. I'll do two sheets of these and then a nail glue and one of these little uh, plastic orange wood sticks. You could do the wooden kind. They actually probably are more cost effective to be honest, but I like, oops. I like the look of the little um, plastic ones. glittery and blue and they fit kind of the packaging that I have better so I will stick all of this in here um, this glue is the McCart glue and I really like it I've used it before for my own personal press-ons and they last quite a while. I will say it's thicker than a lot of nail glues that I've used before. And so it does take a longer time to apply. Like you have to hold the nail down for a longer period of time to make sure it dries all the way. But it has a decent hold and I like that it's not super runny to where it goes everywhere when you're trying to apply it. So that goes in there. Um, this I will pull out. These are just the little like sticker sheets that you use to put the press-ons in the case. So I'll grab these for later. I will need my stickers. Eventually these are custom made. I'll talk about these in a little bit. Each kit gets a freebie sticker. I actually usually do two. I think I got these off of Timu, but they're these cute little like um, fairy butterfly stickers. I don't know if you can see that, but they're super sweet, very pink, which is on brand for me. And I do like uh, things magical and plant-like. So I really liked these stickers. I have these cute little butterfly clips. Again, just a little something. Honestly, they're not the like, best quality, but it's just something that I think is nice to get as a little freebie. So I'll pick one of those. Oh, and I forgot, 
I need to pick up some more candy, but I will put two little high chew in here too. And that should be it. So I always double check that I have all my application stuff, which I do. I have the sticky pad, the glue, I have my alcohol wipes, pusher, both types of files, and then my little freebies. I will cinch that shut and um, fold it over like this. And then take this and pin it to the side. That just keeps everything kind of like nice and compact. And I think it looks cute. So there's the application kit. For actually packaging up the product, I know I will also need one of my little instruction cards. I will go over how I made this right after I package everything up. I do use Canva for all of my promotional material. And then I also need one of these. So I keep these, uh, a couple of them in here for easy access, but I do have a ton uh, in my closet over there. And that should be it for packaging. So let's go back to my desk and package up that set. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. I need a bubble mailer. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is the next day, by the way. Um, I think before I package this all up, I'm gonna clear off my desk so I have more room to work with. So now I have to put everything that I got out back in place. Okay, so now that my space is all clean and organized, I feel ready to go, ready to package these up. Okay, so now I am ready to package up these nails for them to go to their new home. I am going to put on some gloves for this process because I don't want to ruin the nice shine from the top coat on the nails, nor do I want to ruin the shine on these cases here. So when I do get these cases, they're always wrapped and I keep the wrapping so that I don't get any fingerprints on it while I am packaging. So let me put on these gloves. So here are the little cases. I get these from AliExpress. You can also probably find them on Timu, any sort of site like that. I just like the look of them, this nice clear plastic. And it's also a good place for your clients to be able to put them back um, if they're not using a set because the lovely thing about press-ons is that they are reusable. So I'm gonna open the case and I'm gonna pull out these. Now, I specifically look for um, these slightly larger nail tabs. You can buy these, but they're shorter, like the length won't be long enough to fit a whole set. Like these ones are barely long enough to fit a whole set. So just make sure when you're ordering offline that you're checking the measurements and that they're going to be long enough for set. So I will just take a pair of tweezers and then the first one I like to put more towards the middle because uh, like when it comes to like you don't want to put one all the way up here because if you think about where your nail sits, you want it to sit a little bit uh, lower. So I will put this one probably right there. And then I'll take the other one. it more towards the bottom about there do this because at least when I stick the nails in to put them kind of like where the bottom is touching the sticky tab most and not up towards the top because this is where both edges will stick I don't know if that makes any sense like if you try to stick them up like this, you're not gonna get much surface area on the edges of the nails versus if you stick them to the glue like this, they'll stay better. They can be a little bit finicky, but I think, I feel like if you get your tweezer like stuck in there under a corner, then you can get a good grip on it. 
that off. So if I'm trying to film content, I bought um, like decorative spoons off of Timu. Uh, they have like these nice decorative handles and I stick a little bit of like poster tack on the underside and I will use these to pick up the nail and then very um, like artfully place it down and do like a little time lapse. If I'm not filming content, then I will just like use my fingers and place them. Um, it really just depends on, you know, what you're trying to go for. Right now I am filming content, but I'm trying to show you realities of, of how this works. So either do this method, and I will say this method means you don't get any fingerprints on these, or you can just wear gloves like I'm doing right now. But you just stick it on. You're good to go. There's the first nail place. I like to put these in in the order that you would see them on the hand. So for the right hand, I put it on top and I will do it like thumb first, right? Then pointer finger, then middle finger, just so that it's easier to tell for the client when they receive a set, like which hand is which. Although I do also put a little note uh, regarding which hand is which just so they don't get confused. Stick all these in here like this. And that's the first hand. I think these clear cases just look so nice. I don't know. I used to use jewelry boxes and that's something you can start off with is little like cardboard jewelry boxes, but I also find that the tape would peel off uh, some of the cardboard from the jewelry box this so the tape sits nice and flush to the plastic and you can reuse this case over and over i get a lot of satisfaction from this process it's so nice seeing like a hard set that you've spent time working on finished and all put away nice and neat in a little container. This isn't particularly a hard set for me. Um, what made it difficult was the uh, the hurricane because my power kept cutting out. You'll probably see a little bit of that in the footage. But strangely enough, I lost power before the hurricane actually hit us. I don't know if it was because other areas in the state were losing power and they just had a surge. I also do know actually that on the outer bands of the hurricane, there were some tornadoes. So I think there were like 23 odd tornadoes in the state that were picked up. And so maybe one of it like a transformer or something. I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely um, was a bit of a struggle getting these finished. I am really happy with how they turned out though. And I hope the owner loves them just as much as I do. So once they're in, shut the case to avoid getting any sort of dust in here. And then I will take my custom stickers. These I got printed from Vistaprint along with my instruction cards. Vistaprint is great if you are trying to start a small business. I think they're in, I don't know if they're run out of the Netherlands. I can't remember. But they do all sorts of like business card printing, whatnot, and you can upload any sort of photo in the right dimensions and they can print your custom labels, your custom cards, custom stickers, and they're not super expensive. I think all of these stickers were like $50, which in terms of startup costs for a business is just unfortunately something that uh, you will incur. I'll center the sticker and then just stick it on. And now it's uh, nice and customized for me. There are other sticker options. I've seen people do like the, uh, the clear stickers that look really nice. I just, I have all of these that I need to use up and I probably never will because look at how many there are. I think I bought 500. I was feeling very optimistic and um, yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but hey. I have them forever, so I'll stick a sticker on the little box. 
Now for the instruction card, this again I got off of Vistaprint. I made it in Canva though, which I'll show in a minute, but I did all of this myself, wrote out all of the instructions. This is a QR code to a application video that I have. I think, um, unfortunately, the QR codes might not work right now, which is really sad. But what happened was, um, I had ordered, no. So what happened was I had been using a service, I think it's like QRIO, and they have a free version and a paid for version. And I swear up and down that I made these QR codes as the free version where it said, you know, it's never going to change. It's static. The QR code will always work even if you don't have the paid account. I swear up and down that I did that. And then all of a sudden, um, one of my clients messaged me and said, hey, your QR code isn't working on your, your card. And I went and checked my account and it said that they were deactivated because I don't have the premium version. And then there were the like elevated QR code. I don't know. Maybe it was my mistake. I'm really not sure, but I don't have, I think it's like a hundred dollars to spend on the service every year when I'm not taking that many orders right now. Uh, so unfortunately these cards are somewhat out of date, but I feel bad wasting them because I printed, I think I ordered like 500 of them printed. So that's really sad. I will eventually, if I do open my shop back up again here soon, um, I will probably redo the cards and have to reprint them, which again, I feel like is such a waste. But for right now, I'm just messaging my clients um, once I ship their order out and I'm sending them the links to both these things uh, just in case so that they know that they can access the information um, even if the QR code is not working. So yeah, on the back here though, I have space for a little note. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. So once I have the card all written out, then I need to package the nail set. Now to be extra careful, I do just pop these in a little bit of bubble wrap. Um, I get a lot of nail polish orders. Um, I definitely am a shopaholic in some ways. And so I keep all of the bubble wrap envelope and just reuse them. So I put the card in first. And then I put in the nail set. And then I'll put in the little application kit. And I'll think about it for a minute and say, okay, do I have everything? I have the nail set, the application kit, card. Should be good to go. Okay, I will go ahead and close it. Off that. Fold over the top. And then this is ready to ship. Well, almost ready. I will talk about the label in a second. Um, before that though, I do one last sticker because I have so many, I might as well use them all. So I will add a little bit of branding the outside of the package too by adding one more of my little personalized stickers right on the seal. And now it's ready to ship. So let me take you over to my computer and I will show you how I do my shipping envelopes and how I um, design my custom branding stuff. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is the website I use for shipping and it is called Pirate Ship. So it is this one here. If you just go to pirateship.com, it will bring it up or you can do a Google search. You can create a free account, which is what I have. So I will go ahead and log in with my email. And once you're logged in, here is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to have to blur this out because these are previous customers. But this is a website that allows you to create shipping labels at home that you can print from the comfort of your home. Or you can take them somewhere else and get them printed. But it's a way to do shipping labels without having to go into the post office for each one. It also lets you do things like batch labeling and whatnot. So it's really handy if you are running a business at home and you need to do your own shipping. Etsy, if you go through Etsy for selling, it does have its own shipping labels as well. But I do find that sometimes Pirate Ship is a little bit cheaper. So you can go here, create a shipping label. You would just put in the optional email address for the 
recipient, put in their information here. You can save like your own profile. So like I have a profile saved here with all of my info so that I'm not having to re-enter it every time. And then you choose the type of packaging that you're going to be using. You put in the dimensions and it will give you the rates. And again, the nice thing about this is that it's discounted from what you would normally pay through USPS or UPS. If you are shipping on a large scale, I definitely recommend checking out Pirate Ship. Now, the other program that I regularly use is Canva. So here's what the website looks like. It's just canva.com, C-A-N-V-A. And you can log in with your Gmail, which is what I do, or you can set up just an email login. All right, so here's what my Canva homepage looks like. I am by no means sponsored by Canva or any of these programs. These are just things that I've found personally very helpful in my press on journey. Um, I do all of my thumbnails in Canva. You can see here my different iterations of thumbnails that I've tested out. And then I also have all of my branding here in Canva. So I sort them into projects here and I have a branding folder. And this has all of the iterations of logos and instruction cards and banners and whatnot that I've created for my brand. So let me just show you, here's the um, instruction card. Oh, sorry, this is actually a sizing card that I made based on the instruction card that I had. Um, I made this for sizing kits in case I ever wanted to venture in to offering sizing kits. But the nice thing about Canva is that they do have the free option. And I believe that this design here was made entirely with free assets. So you can type in a text box and use like whatever free fonts they have available. You'll know if it's not free because it has this little crown next to it. And this is just for pros. And I will say at this point, because I use Canva so often for so many things, I have purchased the pro membership. I think it's like 80 to $100 a year, depending on if you can catch it on sale. And for me personally, this is worth it because I use this every time I do a thumbnail and it just has a lot of features that I like. So you can do text boxes, um, all sorts of visual elements here, like lines animations, little graphics, stickers. You can upload any picture that you take. And there's something called a brand kit. If you use the pro membership, you can save certain elements, certain colors as part of your brand kit here. And then it will always be available, which just makes doing branded things very easy. You can duplicate designs like this one here. If I wanted to slightly edit it, I can make a copy of it and then do a second iteration. That's how I ended up with all of these different varieties of the same sort of instruction card by just duplicating, making little tweaks in case I wanna save it. I've done my logo a, a couple times, different YouTube banners. They also have video templates too. So if I go here, intros and outros, this is how I do the intro and outro of my channel. I just, I can't say enough good things about Canva. There are tons of options on the free website, and then there are tons of options even more so when you buy the membership. So yeah, strongly recommend Canva for doing your branding. And then once you've created your instruction card or whatever it is that you're wanting to use. So for example, like this one here, this is my instruction card. You would download it as a PNG or a JPEG. So you can pick which one, download it. And then I go to Vistaprint. Okay, and I'm using Edge just by the way, because for some reason with Canva specifically, Edge just runs it more smoothly. I'm not sure what the deal is with Google Chrome, but Canva does run more smoothly on Edge. You can also download the Canva app for your computer and use it that way without any internet access, but I kind of like having everything online personally where I can access all of it and it auto saves. So Vistaprint is right here. 
you can make an account and it looks like they have a sale actually right now. Oh, it ends today. Oh, probably won't be going on by the time that this video goes up, unfortunately, but they often do run sales. And you can see here, they have so many different options. You have Christmas cards, calendars and gifts, business cards, print advertising and office signs. Like you can even do fridge magnets, um, stamps, checks, letterheads. They have all these different sticker types, labels. You can do circular stickers, round stickers, sorry, rectangular stickers, food packaging, custom pouches. They have so many options here for doing branded items. I just, I find this very helpful, especially again, if you are getting started with a business and you need to build your brand and get customized packaging, definitely check out Vistaprint. I just think it's such a good affordable option. So when it comes to actually selling your nails, that is up to you, your personal preference. I am currently using Etsy because it is cheaper. I know Shopify is also a really great option, but there is a yearly subscription fee with Shopify. I do think Shopify gives you more options to personalize. I will say that I've looked into it and it seems like a really good option, but I would say if you're just getting started out and you need a free option, Etsy is definitely a great way to go. You can do things strictly through like PayPal and DMs. I know some press on nail artists will do that. They'll have their Instagram DMs open and they'll take orders through there. Um, I like having an official channel of payment because as a smaller nail creator, right? Somebody who kind of like doesn't have a large customer base or anything like that. Um, I want people to be able to pay through a trustworthy source, uh, at least as I'm getting started here. And I worried that if I just did open DMs on Instagram, people would be maybe like a little bit sketched out about just sending money through PayPal to somebody on Instagram. I know I would be if, I, if they didn't seem like they had a huge following. And right now I think on Instagram I have like 700 followers or something like that. So yeah, I went with Etsy. The only thing you have to pay for is Right here, you'll see that the posting has a date for renewal. I think it's every four months or three months that you have to renew a listing and it's 20 cents to post a listing. So not very expensive at all. The website will host the listing for you. You can add all of your information here, uh, add your pictures, add the description, the instructions for ordering, whatnot, prices. All of this goes in here. So it is very user-friendly in terms of letting Etsy do most of the work for you, but you do sacrifice some of the personalization for your shop. Like every shop is going to look pretty similar because the website posts everything in the same sort of format. So here's what my shop looks like. You do sacrifice that customization if you use Etsy for affordability. You can change the banner up here and you can change like your logo, your personal information. And of course you can pick whatever product photos you would like. However, all of the listings are going to look the same. They're going to have this sort of layout for your shop. And so again, you do sacrifice some of the customization for affordability, along with the 20 cent charge for each item. Etsy also does charge a 6.5% fee for every order. However, I will say that's a much lesser fee than most other websites. I've heard some costing anywhere from 10 to 20% in terms of what they take out of each transaction. So 6.5% is pretty good. Now I will say Etsy has issues. There are big issues right now with Etsy pushing um, quick shipping times, fast turnover rate for customers, which I think goes entirely against handmade goods. If something is being handmade with love and care, you would think that they would want to emphasize not like slow shipping times, but somebody taking enough time to make the product, to have it be a good quality customized product for an individual. So I know that they're trying to compete with all of these other online retailers, but Etsy is supposed to be selling itself as like handmade goods. So I don't love the direction they're going in, in terms of how they promote certain business owners for being quicker shippers, 
large volume shippers. I think that's entirely against the ethos of the company, of the website, but I digress. I think it's still a great option if you are beginning. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, the four things I recommend, check out Etsy, maybe Shopify if you have the money, Canva, Vistaprint, and Pirate Ship are all really good for those of you just getting started with your press-on business. I hope that this has been helpful. I really appreciate all of you spending some time with me today. It really did help get my mind off of the hurricane, uh, just having something to focus on, a project to work on. So thank you for that. I really feel for the people who weren't so lucky, unfortunately. I will leave some donation options in the description. If you do have the means, please check it out. I know there are a lot of people on the coast that are struggling right now with loss of property, even loss of uh, you know, family and friends, especially up in Georgia and the Carolinas. I just, my heart goes out to them. This community though, I've seen rally around this event, the nail community, which I'm so proud to be a part of right now. It's just been such a, a warm and welcoming community overall. And I thank you all for being here, for being part of it. Check out my other links down below, my socials like Discord if you would like to connect there. I also have my affiliate links if you would like to pick yourself up some nail goodies and support me at the same time. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Bye.